All right, everyone. Welcome back to another episode of another installment of this Craigslist scraper. I've uh, I think we've got a few goals a day that we want to do with this program now. Um, first of all, we want to fix that bug that we were talking about in the last episode. So goal number one: fix. Can we zoom in on this, or can we edit the text, or maybe no? Okay, well, whatever. Well, first thing we want to do is want to fix the scraper. Program from examining all tags within the content pages of a Craigslist post. So last time we were talking about how um, when we went into a post, it would search all the tags. So let's go to Craigslist right now. We're going to go to Craigslist. Might take a second. All right, so if we go like to uh, books, let's go to books, and uh, we look at the posts. Like, oh, say, look, there's some posts here, and we're gonna look at this, and then we're saying, oh, okay, so we can look at, we want to look at this basically, and then we also want to look at this. Um, there might be some metadata too that we want to see here. So let's see, Hero of Hacksaw Ridge, that's the title. Mm. That's the description. So we could just look at this metadata right here. Yeah, see, we don't, like, this whole section here, we don't even need to, like, look through, I don't think. Well, I mean, it's fine. We'll just leave it how it is. <laughs> it might be slower or it's more efficient or whatever. So let's look what we got here. Um, I'm basically going to, uh, it's been a little bit since I've worked on this, so it's been, I'm going to just try to review my code and see what we've done here. So we made a... Oh, we opened up the category data file. We made a re user rejects that the user passed in. Okay. And if cats is equal, equal to all, cats is equal to cat data dot keys. Okay. So if basically if the categories is all that we passed in, I assume, then let's see here. Yeah, we pass in a URL, we pass in a regular expression, we pass in categories. Uh, otherwise, if we don't pass in the categories, then we just pass in a URL, we just pass in a regular expression. So, if the categories is all, then we go through all the categories, basically. Um, another goal that I want for this program is I want to be able to uh, go through numerous pages of the site. So if we look at the, come back here, what I mean by being able to go through numerous pages of the website, I mean, when you scroll all the way to the bottom, you look through all these things, you're like, okay, I'm going to go to the next page. That's what I mean by the next page. Right now, our program just looks at the first page of results and spits that back out to us and pulls that data only. We want to be able to get all the data that's on that search query, you know? So that's what we're going to do. Um, now there's another thing I want to do is I want to be able to make this so that, uh, Craigslist doesn't ban my IP or whatever, you know what I mean? Um, so I don't want to make a crap ton of queries to Craigslist, you know, like if I just had my computer just make requests as fast as possible, you know, like give me all your data, then, um, it's pretty obvious that I'm using a bot to do that, you know what I mean? No one can click that fast through a website, you know? So, 
if I manually slow it down by a half a second maybe for each request that I make, then that would uh, significantly reduce the odds of me of the bot being caught. So we're going to manually slow down the requests when made to Craigslist website. It's just common courtesy as well to do that too, um, but mainly <laughs> they, they could ban you too, so that's like a something to keep in mind. Um, I think what else I wanted to do was, for now I think that's good. I think we got three goals we want to do today. We want to fix the script program from examining all tags. Eh, that's more of an efficiency goal. So we'll, we'll like make that optional. So we're going to go like uh, optional and uh, main goals. Uh, I want to come here and then we're just going to save it to, we'll come here. Actually, no, I don't want to go there. I want to go to here. Ah, I don't know. I don't know where to put this. I'm going to here, 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 and then put it right here. So we'll call it goals. How about that? We'll put a date here just to know when we were last year. 3 23 slash 18. Yeah. Okay. What else do we want this to do? Um, well, we want it to. We want to be able to get prices right. Um, now, I did make it so that it will filter out repeat posts. However, sometimes repeat posts, they put the post and then they put like a different price on it, you know, because they like repost it um with a different price in that case i think we might change the program a little bit to like update the dictionary reference if the price has changed or if the price is lower so that way we find the lowest price post that that person has posted on the website um so yeah something to keep in mind so we'll, we'll put that, we'll write that down just to keep it there you know um make it an optional, an optional uh, goal for today. Uh, we so what, what do we say? We said uh, update the dictionary title reference if a if the same exact post if a post is repeated with a lower price. Okay. All right, so that's our, gonna be our goals today. We're gonna minimize that for now. And we're gonna look at what we got here. So, briefly let's go over, dun, dun, dun. let's go, CD documents, CD git. Oh, also, I posted this on GitHub too. Post the code from here on GitHub. So if you want to uh, be able to download this code and be able to use it for yourself, I'll post a link in the description for you to be able to download it. Um, and I might, I, I, it's not really fully set up. I know I need to put a requirements.txt in there, and I need to do all sorts of different documentation stuff as well. Uh, um, but I'll do that eventually. Obviously, <laughs> obviously, uh, CD, that's what everyone says, right? Uh, <laughs> their CD code. So the other day I was also, um, messing around with this too. I was trying to get, uh, what's it called? Sphinx documentation working. It's like you can use Sphinx to auto document, auto, uh, create documentation for your programming. 
code. However, you have to write the documentation into the uh, doc strings and you have to write them into everything basically. And you have to format it in such a way for the Sphinx to, for Sphinx to be able to read it and create an HTML, HTML page from it. So that way it's going to be able to auto document itself. Um, basically what we're going to do now is we're going to try to remember how to work this thing. <laughs> so I think it's a uh, Python scrape Craigslist list dash H because we used par arg parse, right? Can't open error two. What? Oh, okay. I didn't put the, hold on. I didn't put the dot py at the end. Always put your dot pys, everyone. Always put your dot pys. Very important. Hmm. I think uh, it's actually Craigslist scraper, yeah. Might as well use the program name, right? Okay, here we go. So as you can see here, you do dash help, you get, shows the help message, dash u gets you the URL, blah, 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 blah. So the URL that we, we use, we use this one right here. So we're gonna go to the base, oops, the base, <laughs> come on. We're gonna use the base URL here, right here. And just so I don't have to keep typing it in all the time, because I was watching my videos and I was doing that a lot, we're going to just do that instead. So we're going to do uh, dash u and get the, get this, put it here, and then do dash r books, let's just do book, let's do textbook actually, I'm curious. And then we'll do dash C, and it'll be in books. And we'll hit enter. Oh, did we not get the data file? Uh, let's see here, what happened to that? I think I might have deleted it by accident while I was messing around with Sphinx. We'll see here. Data. Ah, okay. So yeah, I moved the data, I moved all the code to its own thing. So docs is going to be here, data is going to be here, and the code is going to be here. So I have to change my program to be able to navigate to that folder because right now it's navigating to a folder that doesn't exist. So it's, it's crashing. Um, and I think it is right here. So we're going to go to do dot dot and that's going to go into the parent directory which we're currently in code see right here we're in code scrape list so we're currently in code it's going to go to, into craigslist scraper go into data and then go into craigslist cast.json so that should work let's give it a shot cross our fingers uh nope hmm Ah, because it's os.getCurrentWorkingDirectory, blah, 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 blah. So we're getting the current directory and then adding all that stuff to it. So we don't want to do that. We want to instead... So this is what's messing it up right here. The os.getCurrentWorkingDirectory. So it's like adding this whole directory code and then adding the parent, parent to data to this. So let's just do... Um... I think we can do convert to abs path, absolute path. If we go os dot abs, os dot absolute maybe. Is that it? I don't know. Let's not guess. Let's show you how to look it up. So we're gonna go to convert relative path. Yes, yeah, see, I've already looked this up before. So, uh, no, I want Python. We're gonna look at Python three. There we go. Uh, again, blah 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 blah. Import os os dot path dot abs path right. So we're gonna go to here. So it's gonna be 
abs dot path dot abs path. Yeah. Okay. Abs path. So you just do that, and that will convert this relative path because right now we're referring, we're not referring to like, we're not starting with this like C, and then dot dot, and then the rest of our directories that go in here, we're starting it with just the dot dot, which which is a relative path to it. But this would convert it into a direct path, an absolute path, otherwise known. So it will insert the C and all the different directories that go that are supposed to go there. Um. And so that way I don't have to rewrite this whole thing and like go through my directories like, okay, well, where, where did I start from? Blah, 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 blah. Nah, I just do this and it works just fine. So, we user rejects equals read compile rejects. Ah, uh, that's the, yeah, right. Uh, extensions, cats, blah, blah, blah. PS4.beautifulsoup. Press for text, yada, yada, yada. And that's how I get, I guess we get the titles. Um, how do we tell if we've reached the end of the page? Well, this loop would be done for sure. So then, and I think, um, after we finish writing all these functions and stuff, we're going to refactor it into a, uh, into an object, into a class that we can use and just create, and then it'll just run all this stuff for us and we don't have to do anything else. So we'll make it like a declarative program. Um, that's what I normally like to do, just so it, spe it speeds everything up, you know, essentially. Let's see here. We want to go to the next page, basically. So we got to look at the URL, the uh, source code of Craigslist here again. We're going to look at books. And we're going to go down here and inspect the new next, inspect this element here. And if we look at this element, we will see that it has a class button next. And it has an href link, which gives you the next search page and continues on to the next page. So if we just do... Uh, da, da, da. next link is equal to soup dot select because we still have the soup we haven't gotten rid of that um, as you can see up here we, we're using this right here so soup dot select I think this is a class I believe dot result title. I think that's what that was. Let's look back at this. Um, inspect that element. Yeah, see, that's a class. So if we come down here and we look at this and we expect this element, then, then, come on, come on. And we have to see if we have class button next. So all we gotta do is put that class in there and we'll, we, we'll have our, uh, let's see here, Did I don't know, let's inspect this again. Yeah, there's a dash there. So we're gonna do, I'm not sure what's gonna work here or not, but we're just gonna try some stuff out, class button next. So we're just gonna, Put that there, see if it works. If not, then we'll change it. Button, next. Um, it's like, I don't know if that will read it as just one class thingy. You know what I'm saying? Um, but we will attempt it. Uh, and then we'll just, uh, print next link. Uh, yeah, we'll do that. And, uh, so we're going to run this here. See what happens. And we didn't get anything. So that means that it didn't work. 
I have a feeling it's because of this. Uh, maybe if we go like, like this, might fix it. Sometimes you just need to add quotation marks to things and it fixes stuff, so. No, okay. Um, let's look it up. Look up. Oops, let's not get rid of our Craigslist page here. So we're going to look up um, soup select class with spaces. Uh, okay, so multiple spaces actually indicates multiple classes. See, that's important to know. You can filter on TR tags that have multiple classes like so. Or you can use CSS Lexer to match many classes. Uh, soup, soup .select tr admin, blah, 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 blah. CSS selector. Okay, so we're gonna come here and we're gonna go here and dot next. I think that might work. Beautiful soup soup. Uh, da, 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 paid. So see how he did. He did this this class first. Admin bookings table row dot bookings history row dot paid. See how he did that? So we want to do, we essentially want to do, if we come back here, we want to do inspect button dot next. And that will give us the uh, a tag of the next page that we want. So we're going to do that. And that should give us what we want. So let's try it. Nothing. <laughs> okay. What happened here? I thought I did that right. What's up? You can use a CSX selector. Ah. I wonder if we can uh, reduce this here for post and post mo uh, soup dot select. Maybe it's because I'm doing soup dot select and not soup dot find all. If you want to search for tags that match two or more CSS classes, you should use a CSS selector. I think maybe it's because I'm not doing. Yeah, I'm not doing the tr tag. We want to do a dot like this. We want to do a dot button dot next. That should work. <laughs> oh. Why? Why do you do this to me? A dot button dot next. That has to work. Come on. P dot strikeout dot body. Am I using this? Am I doing this correctly? Hold on. I think I am. I don't know. Hmm.
Maybe if we just search for next, it'll get it, you know? Dot next. You know? Maybe that'll work. Maybe we don't even have to, like, worry about it. No? Okay. Uh, let's print out the, uh... I wonder if it's even showing it to us, you know? Maybe it's, maybe it's some, like, dynamic code. And if that's the case, then we're going to have to, like, revamp a lot of this in order to take care of that. Because that's going to be a whole thing. We're going to have to make, like... Mm. Yeah, that's going to be a whole thing. So let's print out uh, the soup of this. Soup.txt. Or soup. No, just soup. Maybe that'll work. Okay, there we go. Oh, so see, we're getting a... Uh, Return Craigslist homepage, blah, blah, blah. So we're getting a, a 404 error, it looks like, I think. Page not found, yeah. Um, what's wrong here? What do we do wrong? HTTPS, sacramento.craigslist.org, slash. I think it's because I put the slash in there again. I think I might need to take that out because it doesn't help for copying and pasting, you know what I mean? Yeah, that's the, that was the problem. Become a real investor. Stop working 9 to 5. Hmm. We've stopped. Why have we stopped? Hmm. You think it's going to keep going or no? I'm just kind of looking at it, just thinking to myself, if I were this program, I would say that it's not going to keep going, so we're going to control C. Oh, maybe because I dragged? Uh, that's kind of a thing that happens, you know, if you have... Uh, what the heck happened there? I hit control C and it kept going? I don't know what happened there. Pretty weird. And then it printed that out. Obviously, obviously we need to just get rid of um, this little print here because we figured it out. So we're just going to do that real quick. Do it again. Run it again. And actually we're going to um, put in a pause here I think. We're going to put in a pause of like one second here, or like maybe half a second. Uh, pause. Python pause. Time.sleep. Yeah, that's right. We import time.sleep. We import the uh, time. Then we do um, after each request that we make. So here's the request right here. So after each request, we're going to just do like time dot pause. Well, we'll just do this from time import pause. You can refer to functions like that because they're objects as well. Oh, no, we want to get sleep. Sorry. We want to get sleep. Sleep. I think in um, C++ it's pause. I don't know. So, sleep for 0.5 seconds, I think. Is that how you do it? Yeah. All right. That's what we're going to do. Or we'll do 0.25. Two five, and just run that. Time is not defined. What? Import time. Time dot sleep. What do you mean time is not defined? 
comma time. Maybe it's, I don't know, pip install time. Nope, okay, yeah, I didn't think so. Yeah, no matching distribution. It's because it comes with it. What the heck? What's going on? Module time has no attribute pause. Oh! Wait. Is that my bad? Time.sleep. Control F. Pause. Where did I put pause at? Oh, I did, I did it right there. That's where it is. Right there. Urgh. Time dot sleep right here. So we can do, uh, we can still do that. I guess that's fine. Yeah. Um, it's already written. So whatever. So we're going to do this, do this, do this. There we go. Now we just wait. It's pretty cool though. <laughs> we didn't print it out, did we? Please tell me that we printed it out. <laughs> we didn't print it out, okay. We'll run it one more time. Next link. Just to see if this works. I know, I know, I know. See how it's like a regular interval though? It's just 0.25 seconds each time. Just boom, 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 boom. It's pretty great. <laughs> I mean, you gotta be pretty fast to click that fast, but, you know, it might help a little bit. I have no idea if that's going to help or not. Class button next, ARHRF, title, blah, 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 span, class button, title, next, and GTT, button, HREF. All right, so how do we get that out of there now? What's cool about this is we can just recall this function. We can do it a little bit recursively here and just send in a different URL, basically. Um, so what we can say here is we're gonna do some a little bit of recursion here, which is gonna be pretty interesting. And if you don't know what recursion is, I highly recommend you learn how to use it. It's very, very useful. So what we can say is if next link does not equal none, so it found something basically, then we're going to recall this by saying um, next a tag. We're going to call this next a tag instead of this. We're going to call it uh, next link is equal to how does it go into the post? It does it by getting the attribute href right. So we do next a tag dot adders of href. And then we do, and then we're just gonna call this, we're gonna call scrape Craigslist. It's gonna be next link. It's gonna be URL, I think maybe URL plus this, not sure. Let's see what happens when we um, select next here. What, so we're gonna, I'm gonna show you how to use this a little bit. And we only wanna look at um, XHR, possibly, not sure. Let's look at all for now and just click this real quick. So, at the top, hold on, at the top of this network page, we had this, and it used the URL BKA question mark S is equal to 120. So I think that's the starting point. So let's go back down to here, and it should take us to BSA 240, if my theory is correct. I believe it is. 
Yeah. So uh, BKA question mark quer or query s is equal to two forty. So if we wanted to, we could just do that, but instead we're just going to go link by link. Um, actually, we wouldn't have to do soup dot select. That might save us some processing time if we did that. However, eh, we're almost done with this how it is right now. So we're just going to go URL plus next link. Um, and we're going to do comma. I think that is correct. Right. Or we can just do Maybe we can just do post link, comma, they want the rejects, and then they want the cats. So it's just going to recall this function so we don't have to write any more code to get this to work. Because all we did was we changed the URL of the page, and it's just going to recall this and rescrape the page, see if there's a next there. If there's not a next link there, then it ends. And that's all it does. So if we come back here, and we go, okay. So let's say, um, let's let's ed edit the code a little bit. Let's print if uh, print. So we're going to go like this. Next page. And we can keep track of the pages too, but eh. Not feeling it right now. Time.sleep. Uh, invalid syntax. Okay, I must have uh, did something here. That's processing. Finished processing. I was writing some. I was uh, finishing up the last episode of this series there. So that's what that is about. So we're going to wait for 120 posts. As you can see, it's pretty cool that we can do that. You know what I mean? Like, look, all we do is sit here. We just watch it go by. 120 posts right there. There you go. Pretty sweet. Error. Local variable next link reference before assignment. Ah, okay. So we need to go to... Yeah, see, next A tag. That's without a problem. So this is this is you know just bug fixing right now, syntax stuff like that. Since Python's an interpretive language, it won't tell you um, what's wrong until you run it, which is kind of funny <laughs> in a way. Um, so it's like it's like as it's going through the program, it is interpreting each line of code that you have there. List object has no attribute adders. Ah. Uh, Okay, so we need to get the list, we need to get the object out of the list object. So, soup.select gets a list of tags that matches our result and stores it into next a tag, okay? So, in order to get it out of there, we need to be like, okay, next a tag of zero. Because that's, we only, we only get one result from it anyway. So, if we just do zero, then we should get the we should get that should work I, I'm not sure if that's gonna work at the very end it might crash at the very end of all the pages but we'll see the reason why I say that is cuz if you go all the way to the end and the next link is not stored in the list then the zeroth member of the list doesn't exist but I think it might just return none so it, it should be okay. Possibly not. We'll find out. Name post link is not defined. Man, I'm not on the ball today, am I? Let's see here. Post link. So yeah, it's next link. That's what it's called. Alright, one more time. It should work. It should work this time. Crossing our fingers. Come on. Crossing our fingers.
invalid URL slash search slash EKA question mark S equals 120. Yeah, uh, we need to put, um, I think we need to add the URL to it. Uh, the base URL, I mean. So we're going to go URL plus next link. But the thing is, when we pass this URL into here, it's going to have next link in the URL of the next result. So what we're going to do here is I think we're going to... I think the best course of action would be to create another pass in variable for the next link. Because that way we keep our base URL constant and we keep our next links changing here. Um, and what we can do is we can go like, okay, next link right there, or we can add it here instead. Well, it needs to be, eh, I don't like putting it over here, but we're gonna. So we're gonna put it right here, next link. And we're going to make it a default of none, just so we don't have to pass anything into it. And so when we make our request, which is right here, plus the extension, plus, plus next link. So if it's none, then it's just going to add none to it. Um, Well, actually, we got to do this. If next link equal equals is none, then we do this. Else, we do something else. Obviously, <laughs> we go plus next link. So now, I think if we run this, it should work. I was thinking about it, and I was telling myself, man, I think this program might work. But you know, you never ever know. So I'm showing you the process of debugging, showing the process of uh, getting this stuff working, basically. Um, this is the process of getting a, get, building yourself a project, essentially. And uh, hopefully we can grow this bigger and bigger and bigger and get it so that it's uh, a useful tool for people to use, you know. I wanted to get, basically I wanted to be able to look at the prices on here, look at the data on here, search the, search with this data of that stuff on eBay, grab prices from eBay and compare the prices from there with this the, with the prices on Craigslist here. I think we're getting near the end here. Hopefully, we're getting near the end here. Obviously, that timer has slowed things down. I might cut out a lot of the stuff whenever I run this because I am running it quite a lot and we are just not doing much by sitting here and doing this. I think it's working though because I think I'm seeing more than I normally see. You know? I definitely think that this is more than 120. I think this is working. We'll see if it crashes at the end. I'll see you at the end and I'll let you know how it went. Note to self, cut this out. Cut this part out.
Alright. Cutting back to here. So, I've been watching this for a minute here. I think it might be looping on one page only, requesting the same page over and over and over. Could be wrong. Keep me keep me posted on that. Cut the rest from here. Okay, see this right here? This is definitely looping now. I can see it. Become a real estate investor, those three lines right there. So we're going to control C this uh, whole thing here. It's looping forever, essentially, is the problem. Um, I think, let's try and figure out why that's happening here. Maybe if we go all the way to 700 here. Let's see. If we come down here, we start at, you know, 6... <laughs> Start at like 240, 480, um, 720. So we go to 480, and we come all the way down to the bottom. See this next tag right here, 41 to 600, and so we come down here, and but see this next tag right here. Inspect it. 
What is happening? Uh, yeah, there's no HREF. That's the thing. Okay. Ah, it's never coming out, so that's why it's never printing that. So we'll put it here instead. And what I want to do is I want to also print... Um, I want to print the URL that we are going to be putting in there. So it's URL plus basically extends... Extend? Is that correct? Oh, see this right here? That might be no good right there. See how it's inside of the loop right here? I think that might be our problem right there. So if we format and dedent the region. Interesting. We might have just solved our problem right there. So it's looping, 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 looping. Comes out of that loop. Comes back into here. Goes to a new post. Does this whole thing again. That's exactly what was happening right there. Okay. I think we just fixed our problem here. So let's try it again. Uh, syntax right, 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 right. So I didn't fix that right here, but I do want to actually use this. Uh, we're gonna do URL plus. Oh, I don't know. Yeah, we're not gonna do that because that seems like it's work. Okay, that seems good to me though. We're gonna do this. Let's see what happens here. I'll see you guys in a bit when this is done running. I think it's working. I think it is working. Stay tuned.
You know, I think I just realized something. It's never going to stop again because... Because of something else here. And you know, I'm also going to add a tag to allow us to skip going into posts. Because <laughs> god dang, dude. It is ridiculous. That's what we're going to do here right now. So goal. New goal. Um, add argument, add flag that turns off and on searching inside of posts for data. So we're going to do that right now because gosh dang dude. It is taking absolutely forever. And I kind of just want to be able to, you know, like quickly test stuff. So we're going to call this flag. Um, what should we call it? I don't want to call it verbose because it's not really being verbose. It's just going in further depth. Um, we'll call it... Uh, Uh, we'll call it D for deep, and we'll do like, um, make like a, uh, deep, we'll call it like deep search. How about that? I think that's good. We're going to call this help, the help. It's going to be, um, Searches the content of each post, not just the titles. So if you want to search the content, you have to turn this flag on. If you don't want to search the content, you don't put this flag. That's what I want to be able to do. So required is going to be false. Destination equals uh, deep search, and then the default will equal uh, false. And we're going to put this after this flag here because we can add as many categories as we want to the end. And uh, let's give this a try. So we're going to say um, if cats and args dot underscore underscore dict. We're going to do this. We can add another one that says if do 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 do. If deep search in args underscore dict, then we do Deep is equal to equal to args dot deep search. I'm sure there's a better way of doing this. I'm telling you right now. <laughs> I'm telling you right now. Um, and then we're going to say deep search. And we're going to come to Oh, else, it's just going to be this here. And 
And we're going to name the variable search content. That's why I put that there. Um, Argus.cats, yada, 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 yada. And this goes there. Good. And I think um, we need to put this stuff right here as well. Basically, we just need the if statements. And then we can put this right here. And we're going to go deep search content equals deep search. And there is no cats variable in this case. It's equal to deep. Sorry, not deep search. Just deep. Because that's what we named the variable right here. Now, blah, 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 blah. so we go here. And that's when cats does not exist and deep search does not exist. Cool. So that should work. I will fix this eventually to do. We'll put it to do here. We'll say, we're going to say like, because there is an easier way of doing this. I know there has to be an easier way of doing this right here. To do. Find e simpler way of adding optional arguments if they are inputted or not if they're passed or not because right now this is getting just like way too long I mean look at this every time we add a new optional art optional flag optional flag we have to add a whole another series of this case Cases. And every time we add that, we have to multiply the series of if statements by two. So if we wanted to add another optional argument to this, we would have to add four more entire if cases like we did here. So we have to have one, two, three, four, just like we did right here, four more if we wanted to have one more argument here. And if you're wondering how I know that, it's simply four times two, I believe. It might be four squared, but I do. I think it's four times two because you're increasing the amount of possibilities by two times the amount. So it's four times two. Um, so in fact, so there's two possibilities for cats. So it's either there or not. There's two possibilities for deep search. It's either there or not. And there's two possibilities for the next one, which would be either there or not. So you take two times two times two. That's two times two is four. Four times two is eight. So you have eight total possibilities if you want to add a whole new argument to it. And that's the biggest problem with it. So we're going to go into, da -da, I think it's Scrape Craigslist here. We're going to call, um, we're going to add a new argument called uh, search content equals, equals false. I mean, we could just do that. We could just do that, and that might reduce the number of things that we have here, but no. No, no, I don't want to do that because, yeah, actually, that, that doesn't change anything. <laughs> so, yeah, there we go. Search content is equal to deep. Uh, whoops, we want to go here. We want to come here, and we want to say, okay, search content is equal to false. So, if search content is equal to false, then we don't want to get, run this program right here. So... Post in post. Mo is step through each post to find any matches to the regex that was passed. If post.txt not in matches.keys. Ah, that's, that's to check if, um, there, let's put a little note here. Check if we have already added this post to the matches list. 
We're going to add that there just to uh, remind me so I don't have to like ponder what it is again. Um, and this grabs all the, this grab, this uses the rejects to find if we match our rejects that we passed in as a user. So we want to say, okay, um, right. Uh, I think we got to edit this, which is strange because I would have thought maybe not, you know. We could do and here, we could shorten this up and post dot text not in matches dot keys. And we can move this right here. So we're basically just short making the code more readable. So we can get rid of this if case if case statement here. Shorten down the tab here. And get rid of this one here too. Makes it a little bit more readable and a little bit uh, less nested, which makes it a little bit easier to look at on the eyes, at least for me. Um, content match true, title match equals true. Uh, we don't need to do this whole thing here. Which means we need to pass in um, the search content flag. We should call it a flag. Search content flag. Um, we need, so we need to come here and change it again to search content flag because it is a flag. It's either true or false. There's nothing else to it. So when we basically refactor everything, it's going to reduce the number of arguments here in each and every single. Um, I, I should talk about that. So when, when you make it into an object oriented program, it's going to put all these things into a scope within the class that make it almost like a global variable kind of. So like you can uh, manipulate those variables inside the class instead of having, you know, passing all these variables through each and every single function. So we do if search content flag is equal equal to true, then we do this. If not, then we do this. Then we do the rest of this stuff and we just say, okay, content match is false, but the title match, if the title match is true, then add it into the here. If not, then we just get out. Um, I think we need to change this name too, because it's not really, it, it, it does go into the post, but it does more than just that. It um, adds the data, well, hold on, go into post. It adds the data to our, uh, to our stuff, you know, so it's like, it does more than just going into the post. Uh, we also need to change the description of this here. Goes into the post if search content flag is true and looks for a match to the rejects that was passed by the user. Um, something we could also do is we could store, okay, so like I have, I'm thinking of all these different features here and I've got to write them down. Um, so another feature idea here that we could have here is if, let's write this down. This is a good idea. 
store the data that we get into a JSON file because it's pretty easy to store and so that way if we get a result that way um, we can just check if that data is in our JSON file if it's already in our JSON file we just skip over that title and we just continue on um, unless obviously if the price is lower like we were talking about before I'm going to cut this out, cut this out here. Okay, store the data that we got into a JSON file. And when we store the data into a JSON file, we can go back into it and look to see if we have already added that data into the JSON file we already have. So that way we don't have to go through Craigslist over and over and over, look through all those requests, make all those requests and, um, essentially waste our time you know because we've already gotten that data we don't need to go back into craigslist and um basically find that data again you know and we can store the date and time whatnot stuff like that store the date time etc and check back on it on a daily throughout the day that way it's going to speed up our program. It's going to let us allow us not to make a ton of requests constantly, and um, it's going to keep us a little profile too, basically. So yeah, I think that's a great idea. So we'll add that eventually. Right now we're adding a flag that turns off the searching inside of post for data. We'll be able to sort prices. We still need to do this. That's a key one. Manually slow down the request. We did we did this one. So what I'm going to do here. In order to show that I finished it, I'm going to put a, oh, I don't know here. I would put a check mark, but, you know, we don't really have a check mark here. So I'm going to put a plus sign here. We've added that. Go through numerous pages of the website. We've also added this, I believe. Well, I mean, we're still working on it, kind of. So we're not going to do that. Fix scraper program from examining all tags, uh, yada, yada. Update the dictionary title reference if a post is repeated with a lower price. Right? So... We are getting <laughs> some of this stuff done, but we're also not getting a lot of it done. <laughs> Goes into the post of search content flag. Search content flag flips through and looks for a match to the rejects that was passed by the user. Let's delete this. Um, nah, we'll leave. We'll leave it there. So, I think we might put it here just to uh, help us out a little bit. Um, and we'll put an else flag or an else case. We don't need to, but just for print purposes and to see how our program is doing. Um, not going into post for there you go so if we run this program again let's run it again and we're now we're gonna pass the D flag for deep searching What? 
perfected one argument. Default is equal to false, required is equal to false, destination equals cats, default equals all, nargs. Ah, right. I think, I think there is a Google nargs python arg parse. I think you can put in like one or nothing. Control F nargs. The plus sign. I think we go down one more. Yeah. Is this the art parse tutorial and not the documentation? I think uh, it should be over here somewhere. Here we go, right here. Nargs is equal to none. Can I say nargs equals zero? Let's try it. I wonder if that'll work. Probably not. <laughs> um, Nargs for store actions must be greater than zero. If you have nothing to store, actions such as store true or store const may be more appropriate. Ah. Okay. Is that in here somewhere? Store true, store false, exiting methods, customizing file, parcel parsing, printing help, parser. Let's look for store, aha. Const, the const argument add argument is used to hold constant values that are not read from the command line. Okay, so we're going to go to, I think it's action equals store const. Store true, aha. Uh -huh. I think it's action. Action. Okay, it has to be a string though. So we gotta make sure that's a string. Okay. All right, 
So let's try it here. Dash D. Missing one required positional argument. Search content flag. And go into post. Yada yada yada. Right. So we got to change that again. So right here. We got to add that. And we got to add this. Okay, there we go. Try this again. There you go. Actually, we don't want to do deep. So we're going to not pass it and see what happens here. Local reference, mo reference before assignment. Ah, yeah. So if we come here, we see that mo is assigned right here, but you know, if we're not using it, then you know, we're gonna say mo equals none right here. So that way it initializes it, and then if it passes this if statement, then it comes here, and then it passes, and it actually gets something, then it will store something else besides none there. See that? See how much faster that is? And that's how, why you want to speed up your program as much as possible. And I will let you know when this is done, if it is done, because now we're going to know for sure. And I think actually it's broken already because there should only be like five or 10 pages, you know, and it's going like 20 times now, probably. So I'm not sure what's wrong with it really, but we are going to figure it out. I promise you that. So let's end it. I think there is a problem with it somehow. Not exactly sure what the problem is, but we will figure it out. So I think this recursion stuff is making messing us up here. However, I do think it's the best way of doing this. So instead of um, doing it like this, though, we're going to do it a different way. We're going to add a whole new function that includes this function. Def. Recur pages. Break. And instead, it's going to all start here. Rejects cat equals all next link now we're not going to add that we're going to do search content flag we're going to delete this um, i'm going to delete this and that means we can delete all this stuff here and that means we can delete this and we can come here and go like this. And um, is that it here? There's more stuff down here I know. Right here, we can get rid of this. We can get rid of this whole thing actually. And then we can also get rid of all this actually. And we can get rid of this. However, I might want to add that to up here somehow. So we're gonna just like comment it out for now. So we're gonna do Alt 3. So if you don't know, keyword to all three, comment all that stuff out is all three. Okay. So let's come up here. Go like this. So we're going to go for um, we're going to say next a tag equals soup dot select dot next you think the uh, previous page tag has a next element to it 
button prev now. Uh, first page, button first. Uh, control F, next. I want to control F into here though. Eh, whatever. Okay, um, we're going to come back into here. Go like this. If next a tag of zero does not equal none. Print next page. Basically, we want to call this function here. And we're going to go. Gonna just copy all this here and put it up here. This should be faster. Learn how to copy paste everyone. It's much, much, much easier. And then we're gonna do Alt 4 if you know that keyword there. There you go. That get, removes the comments that you added. Um uh, so we're, and this is going to be recur recur pages Craig else it just ends yeah that's totally fine I think it's fine at least I don't see anything wrong with it There we go. So now if we come back into here, and we control F, actually no, we wanna do edit, uh, replace. We wanna replace it with, hold on. We wanna replace it with this. So we come back over here, edit, replace, make sure that we're doing this right with this, okay, close, and we're going to come back here and actually put a default flag in here, and that should, have, that should do it right there. So now if we come here, we try this again, should work. All right, so I only did one page, I think. Um, which is okay, but it's not what we want. Ah, it's because we're not doing the soup up there. Hmm. Hmm. It's because we didn't make the request up there to the URL. So we can't really get the next tag. So. Oh, God. You know, I'm going to delete that and call that a day here for now. I think we made some okay progress. I think we've refined what we want to know and what we want to do with this program so far. And I think we also um, made a bit of progress here today. So if you liked the video, leave a like. If you want to see more, subscribe. If you want to help support the channel.
cut that out. <laughs> if you liked the video, leave a like. If you want to see more, subscribe. If you want to help support the channel, click the minds link below, create an account today, and I will see you all next time. Bye-bye.